Welcome to our adventures. After travelling Australia earlier this year, we returned to the UK desperate for the kind of adventure only an overlander can handle. We've spent the last six weeks converting a standard Land Rover Defender into our dream off-roading home on wheels. In this episode, we put our build to the test and find out if it's everything we hoped it would be. So, I'd say mixed reviews. Part in our mouth. So I'm looking forward to this. Whatever you do, don't buy a Defender. So far, great success. We're on the road again, and we're in Africa. <laughs> we're definitely not. Look at the jumpers. We're still in Old Blighty. We're still in England. Yeah, we're about 10 minutes down the road from our house in Norfolk. <laughs> so we haven't actually driven the Defender really much. We've only driven it from when we picked it up, when we bought it, and to pick up the roof rack the yeah. other day. So we best uh, give these Defenders a drive and see if we actually like yeah. driving them, I suppose. Actually, like, learn how to drive it, use it and yeah. stuff. And uh, on that note, we have learned from past experience. Well, we almost did because we were packed yesterday, right? Food in the fridge, everything went inside just to go for the last quick week. And John went, should we go to Scotland? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go to Scotland, have a big adventure. But when we did it in Australia, so we built the van, went, like, went out, went on yeah, the trip. Yeah, started off on this like epic, epic road trip yeah, around 10, Australia. 10,000 kilometre road, uh, road trip around Australia. And then the first night was the most uncomfortable <laughs> night's sleep we've ever had. So, and we had to make like adjustments to the bed and everything on the road. Yeah. So we thought, let's be smart, let's learn from our mistakes, let's stay local. We can show you around where we live as well yeah. and test her out. We was going to keep on the drive last night, but <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're off to do a bit of green laning. And we don't know anything about green laning, no. so we had a quick Google last night. We signed up to Glass, but our membership hasn't come through yet, no. so we're just winging it today. Yeah, I was madly searching on Norfolk County Council website for byways and stuff last night. So um, let's give it a crack, eh? So our green laning got off to a great start. Found us a nice little unmade road through Thetford Forest with a few little bumpy bits. Great, having fun. Now got us on to our first proper full byway and we've come down, it's pretty narrow, and we've come to this. And the old girl is a bit too tall to get through. So we've got to go back up the byway. reckon then boys your first bit of green laning it's hard really because we want to test the vehicle obviously to make sure it's all right and that, but then you don't want to scratch it so it's a mix between using it for what you've built it for and trying to like not damage it really yeah, well, so, she's so pretty we can't yeah. make it too mean but looking. then what's the point in having it if we don't use it so it's true yeah. bit of a balance so now we're just talking about scratching her up but saying that we've got to find a balance you know we've got to use the van John and I both just got out of the car and we see these. Look at them. Look at them. Heart in our mouth. I was just, oh, it's like, oh, a beauty, a beauty little van. And then I did this. It's just it. Whew. Pit stop test number two. And this is the very most important test. Has the food gone? Ah, pretty good. Look at that. Nothing's gone about anywhere. I'm One thing you I... haven't eaten it all already. Oh, shut it, you muppet. One thing I was a bit disappointed about with this fridge, though, is I realised that the milk won't, like, go in any of the side pockets. So I've put it in there, but that's a good thing, I suppose, at least, because then, one, it can't fall over, and two, if it leaks, then it will just get caught in the drawer. So might have to rethink my milk storage. But happy days. Gone over some pretty decent bumps, and the fridge is all still good. So I'm just going to drop down the air pressures on all the tyres and I don't really need to to be honest because all the, the surfaces, they're all dry because it's not rained for a while and it's not really deep sand but I just want to check everything out and test everything out and then I can use the compressor later to air everything up. So if you've not want to see one of these before, let me show you how they work. So this is your tyre deflator, so it's just a gauge onto this union and then this pin here, as you can see, 
that's got like a tire valve key on the end so in your tire valve that'll as you unscrew that that'll undo this so all you do is you screw it onto your valve and then unscrew your, your valve insert with this pin and then all you do is you read your pressure and then you just pull this back to drop the air push it back in and then you'll see your pressure again and then just keep doing it until you get your pressure you want and then just screw the valve back in and undo it and then it's job done so I know it might seem a bit dopey to be whamping on about tyre pressures in an episode where we were driving down a couple of little gravel tracks but we found out how important it was in Australia because we've not done a huge amount of this stuff but we'd be driving down some horrible corrugated roads there you'd stop, you'd drop your pressure and it was like you'd like magically upgraded your suspension it made such a difference we met these lovely blokes out there who were travelling in a Jimny, a Suzuki Jimny and they were going down the gravel track and had a massive blowout because they didn't have the equipment to inflate and deflate and that meant that for the rest of their trip because they couldn't get anywhere to get a new tyre for the rest of their trip they had to stop and park like miles away from any sites they wanted to see because they couldn't risk going on any of the gravel tracks so it's definitely worth something something that's worth like learning how to do anyway another feature of the van that's getting its first test john stop showing people me fear so how's it going jess we so had far, a... so far great success we... i've not peed on myself yet we had a bit of a worry because the toilet's so low <laughs> and obviously for men it's all right you could just sort of Oh, what? We're good, we're good, we're good. <laughs> you can just sort of put it inside, this but is for way women... too much personal information. <laughs> the way your legs are, it's almost sort of pointing up. So it's a bit of a... How are we going back there? We've, I think we've, we've, we've conquered it. avoid a, a flooding situation. We've conquered it. <laughs> no, I'm trying to pull my pants up. Go away, it's not enough room in here. <laughs> I am so sorry. Put it away. Are we all good? We're all good. No disasters. Have you peed in the, the, the peed in the poo box or? No, I haven't peed in the poo box. I've peed in the, the pee <laughs> yes. funnel. You're so disgusting. You're the one filming it. I apologise, everybody. So what are we doing now then? Right. Well, I haven't had any food, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So. And I think we've probably tested her out enough on bumpy tracks to know the bits that we need to go home and fix the creeks on and yeah. stuff. So I'm thinking we're going to find ourselves a nice park up and have a nice early dinner. Yeah. Plan. Plan. Let's do it. Just about to pull up in our park for the night and uh, England has done what she does best. Not happy. This is one time that uh, being in a van over a defender is much better. Yeah. <laughs> John. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not buy a Defender. John. <laughs> Six weeks of my life wasted. He doesn't mean that. <laughs> we just need to adjust to our altered space. That's yeah. all. Well, after li being in the van, like the van now seems like we had loads of space. So, <laughs> yeah, it's incredible how like how you get used to things anyway. Mm -hmm. So but so, yeah. yeah. We just need to adjust. But good news is it stopped raining, which means that I can cook outside in the outdoor kitchen with boom. Looking sexy, Joy. <laughs> Looking sexy. I think you might have to keep them on for later on, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, we I brought my wellies in case I needed to test out any puddle depths, but actually they're gonna come in well for fighting off the old stinging nettles. If you're not from the UK, stinging nettles are evil little bastards that are like, I'll show you one. They just like sting you, even through your clothes. Horrible. Anyway, let me show you where we've got for our park up tonight. These are the evil little stinging nettles. So we're right down just by this lovely little pond and um, I'm really hoping we might get some little animals come visit us in the night because it's on the edge of a little nature reserve as well. So but I'm absolutely starving, so let's get the dinner on. Well, dinner is not my finest work, I have to say. It's not up to my usual cordon bleu standard, but I would say that it's edible. 
So, you know. Edible? You can't sell it to people like that, Jess. I definitely wouldn't sell it, oh. put it that way. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, green laning. If you've never done it before, um, I'd recommend it. Like, it's pretty good, isn't it? Mm. Like, obviously, this time of year, it's not too muddy, but then I suppose it'd be real fun in the mud, wouldn't it? Mm. Uh, but you can join this company called Glass, Green Laning Association. It's £50 a year, and then you get to go on this uh, com- uh, website called Trailwise 2, mm-hmm. and that gives you all the maps of where you can go and all the, the byways and unsealed roads and things like that. Basically, they're roads where you wouldn't know there were roads and you wouldn't think you could go down them. But, but it's totally legal. Yeah, th- it's totally legal. Mm. So, yeah. If you don't want to do that, you can go onto your, at least in England, county council website, onto the highways section. And on those maps you're looking for, they're called boats, which is byways open to all traffic and just unsealed kind of roads maintained by highways. Um, but it's a lot easier because it's kind of all in one place on Trailwise 2. And there's like comments and things as well, isn't there? Yeah. So. Um, and I'm probably going to get shot down in the comments for this, but oh well. Yeah. People say, don't do this on your own. Don't go green on your own. Take somebody with you, blah, blah, blah. Which, like, I'm not saying don't, like, be sensible about it. Take some gear, recovery gear, max tracks and things like that. But you haven't got to worry about it in England. You know what I mean? Like, you're never further than, like, what, probably an hour at the most remote Absolutely places. Most, yeah. But most places, you're like 10 minutes, 15 minute walk from somebody to else. To main road. Yeah, yeah, so you've got your phone, signal, you speak the language. Of all the places I'd want to get stuck on my own, England's the place mm. to do it. So or at least practice like doing stuff like this on your own, yeah, outside your comfort zone. Yeah, if you, if you panic, yeah, it's no biggie. Whereas mm. if you're travelling and you're in Africa or Albania, Australia, anywhere like that, and you get stuck on your own... It's a different ball game. Mm. So, yeah, I'd say if you're doing it on your own, practice here first anyway. Morning, everyone. Morning. I've been trying to get around about an hour now. An hour, my bum, actually, is probably now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, somebody just sent me a message on Instagram saying, um, did you see any bears last night? I said no, but I woke up next to a moose. <laughs> Get up. Oh, just a little bit more time. So what's your first review on the old Defendi? So I'd say mixed reviews, definitely. She's soft though. Like every mattress we have, she moans about it. Not every mattress. Whereas I thought it was quite a comfy mattress, quite the, a comfy bed. The mattress wasn't so much a problem. It was more that... You kept stealing the covers, and it was bloody freezing last night. It was a bit chilly night. last night, yeah. But uh, that's one thing about the night here we got. Yeah, like, it doesn't have a thermostat. Yeah. We're not used to this. On the ever spatches and the real expensive ones, like it just cuts in and out what the temperature is. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I don't know how good it would be anyway, because obviously you have to shut this flap down. Yeah, fair play. Like It's pretty sealed up here, so I think we're... Oh, we're going to have to like it or lump it or light a fire up here or something like that. Light a fire. Wear pyjamas might be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, get up. Okay. Look at this for service, look. This is a true gentleman at work here, look. Yeah, thanks, love. You just have one of these for those. Oh, romance isn't dead, eh? Henry Cavill at his best. <laughs> so, the old landy might be a little bit smaller than we used to. Someone might steal all the covers, but I am loving how much more it's making us go outside. Oh, yeah, well, the whole reason we do this is because we want to wild camp, but then when we do it in a van, we just stay inside. Like, last <laughs> night, the, best, where the weather was miserable in this morning. We wouldn't have even stepped outside, yeah. really, would we? Whereas with this, you have to be outside, and it's brilliant, really, isn't it? And it wasn't even actually miserable no, at yeah. all. But if we had the choice to not go outside, we wouldn't. Yeah. So, loving it. Um, there's a couple of things we wanted to talk to you about though. First is, we've had a couple of mentions of a uh, cost breakdown video. So if that's something that you guys would like to see, if you let us know, then we'll make one. And the other is that thanks to you guys, we now know that there's such a thing as the Land Rover Owners Show. <laughs> Wasn't something we knew about before. And so we're gonna go, aren't we? Yeah, so it's on the 9th and 10th, and it's at Beaver Castle. Yeah. And it's a beautiful place. We've been there before and looked around the house. So it's worth going just to sort of like see the grounds and that really. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, so we're gonna camp as well. So I'm not sure if we're gonna get there Friday night yet or not, it might depend on the weather. Uh, but we're gonna camp, so I'll have the kettle on, come over and say hi and have a brew. It'd be lovely to meet you guys. Yeah, but make sure you come early, because they serve alcohol there, and the last time Jess <laughs> had a bit of alcohol when we was in Slovenia, didn't go down too well. Let's so. just say I'm a lightweight. Yeah, you so. wouldn't get much sense out of there past like, <laughs> Six o'clock, five o'clock, baby. So, yeah. But yeah, do come and say hi. It'd be great to put some faces to names for sure. So I'm looking forward to this. It's a bit geeky, I know, but if you're a man or a woman, I suppose, are you excited about this, Jess? I'm excited. She's excited, I'm so. I'm excited about this and your dance moves. Yeah, well, <laughs> but we're gonna try winching because again, another thing we've learned through traveling is you don't wanna be trying anything for the first time when you're in a bad situation because a couple of times when we were in Australia, we got in a bit of a flap as soon as we got bogged and things like that. So thankfully we found a big tree and we're going to have a go at winching. I told you about my gear the other day, but I'll quickly go through it again. So, because I got it the other day. So that's my strap, tree saver, equalizer strap, all that malarkey. Then I've got my big old snatch strap. She's a beast, the old 12 tonner. Hopefully we don't need to use the snatch strap. Yeah, well, hopefully we <laughs> don't have to use any of it. Um, that's a soft shackle. Um, so this is basically the same as a D shackle, but it's a lot less dangerous. And if you go on YouTube and you choose some videos about uh, when D shackles break, they're like a missile, unbelievably dangerous. Whereas this, real lightweight and like I say, not as dangerous. And then that's the ring uh, for your pulley. So they used to be like on ball bearings and you latch them in, whereas these now, uh, for these soft shackles, they just go over there and then they just spin on the winch like that, so really good. And another brilliant bit of advice we got from, what's his name? Kizzy. Kizzy, old Kizzy. He was saying that uh, if you're ever going through some like waters or anything like that, take your winch line off and like strap it to the top. So then if you get bogged or stuck, you haven't got to go searching for it, it's at the top there. So thanks very much for that, we'll be doing that. Um, but I'm not a professional. Don't take my advice as like gospel, do your own research as well. This is just what I've learned. So let's give it a go. Boys and their toys, eh? I've not seen him this happy in ages. So we're all set up and we're just going straight to the tree with a winch. So we're pretty much one-to-one -one with a winch. But if you're in a bit of a tricky situation and you want to pull more weight or anything like that, or you want to go slower, you use this uh, winch pulley because if you put that round on the soft shackle, your winch rope round it back to your vehicle, it then doubles your capacity of your winch, but also halves the speed as well. So it's always good to have. And then also if you use a, a rope blanket to put on, because then if it snaps, it won't twang at you as much. If you haven't got one, use the floor mat, a jumper, a towel, anything like that, just to dampen it. So we're all set up, so let's give it a go. Well, she works anyway. So John's had his favourite part of the day. Now it's time for my favourite part of the day. Let's do lunch. What are you hovering for? Has anybody noticed how sharp I'm looking? Do look sharp, love. Jess is a professional hairdresser, by the way, if nobody yeah, knew. I'm really not. And in that, <laughs> I mean, we watched a couple of YouTube videos about it, and now she cuts my hair. A couple, also known as one. <laughs> also, we're cheap. So, you know, I cut my own hair as well. Why not? Anyway, let's get some food. some chairs the other day as well these are little oex ones and they're tiny and they fold out Oops. and make these cute little camp chairs Ooh. oh yeah oh voila so i say they fold up in a little bag lightweight brilliant wish we had some crisps and i can reach the tap from outside what were you just doing my sandwich? What did you do? 
John, that's a stinging nettle. Is that's it? not funny. That's not a stinger. Or like some kind of poison thing. <laughs> not bad. So we've had our lunch and we had a bit of a chill and we're off to pick some dessert. One of my favourite things I found out when I moved to the UK was that blackberry bushes just grow everywhere and it's okay to go and pick them as long as they're not in like someone's personal garden. And apple trees as well, so. Yeah, yeah. well one of my favourite desserts is apple crumble and Jess does a mean apple crumble, don't you Jess? Oh, thanks sugar tips. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, we just wanted to do a quick video, just a, a bit of a shakedown of the camper. And uh, there's a few little niggles that we want to do, and a few little, little tweaks. tweaks. Yeah. yeah, but so I definitely suggest if you uh, have done a camper, test it out before you go on a big trip or anything like that. And uh, by no means are we professionals or experts, as you see with our winching. <laughs> but the only way to learn stuff is to try it. Yeah. So yeah, but if you've got any like criticism or hints, yeah, tips, helpful tips. Yeah. Like this, we can't tell you how grateful we are for yeah. the ones that we've had. So. Yeah, it's been brilliant. So uh, yeah. Make sure you send them in in the old comments anyway. And we'll see you next time.